to the gods and the earth and everybody around the world. I'm Russell Norman and this is the new Swahili TV. Today we have a very, very special guest. None other than the iconic, the legendary, the literary genius, the author of the spook who sat by the door, Sam Greenlee. We're going to go in depth into the man, the life, the struggle, and the revolution. So, subscribe right now. I'm your host, Russell Norman, and this is the new Swahili TV. Let's go. So you were the first. Some people even credit you as, and people might get the term twisted, but as the founder of the genre of black exploitation. How do you feel about that? No, uh, that credit would go to uh, Melvin Van Peebles. Okay, Sweetback. Sweetback. Yeah. You so you credit him? Yes. Would he credit you? Because because okay. a lot of people credit you with beginning the black exploitation era, and not what some people think might be blacks being exploited by the powers that be, but black exploitation when it was powerful black male characters that were going against the system to free their people or their family or defend their community. Before Sweetback, Most, that was you, correct? Uh, yeah. No. Sweetback came out first. Did that inspire you? No. It was completely independent with what yeah. you were doing with the Spook. Right. I called Sweetback and Scoop the bookends of the Black Sportation movie. Ah, okay. Sweetback kicked it off. Mm -hmm. Spook ended it. Because after Spook came out, they didn't want to see those fantasies anymore. What about Shaft and Superfly? That was, you think that's, that's a... That's bullshit, man. Right. You don't even consider that in that genre. It's in the black exploitation genre. But not in the same league as the films you were doing. Not in the league of either Sweetback or Scoop. A lot of them films were written by uh, uh, by Caucasians, right. too. Yeah. So that's the other yeah. Most of side of the coin. Most of them produced finance and written by and Caucasians. By Caucasians. Yeah. To actual now, a, a little known fact is we didn't get a green light from a Hollywood studio. The bulk of our funds came from predominantly black investors. Mm. Any notable black investors that helped uh, celebrity um, investors that might have helped Greenlee? Get no, his no. Book. Most of them were uh, working class uh, blacks who put their savings into the film. Uh, on occasion, wealthy blacks who could uh, afford it. Uh, one black man, uh, a wealthy doctor in California, uh, was ready to uh, put up completion funds in the film. And he was approached by the IRS, and they said that if he invested in the film, they would uh, survey his uh, returns all the way back to... Audit him. They would audit him. All the way back to birth. Right, and he backed off. Now, there was another prominent black man who intervened. Uh, there was a consortium of black investors in Washington, D.C. They were going to put up completion funds for the film because we were running out of money and had to close down. And one of them said, uh, well, look, we need to check out this cat Green. He's from Chicago, and so is Jesse Jackson. Let me contact Jesse. And Jesse said, under no circumstances should you invest in this film because it's uh, in opposition to everything that Martin Luther King stood for. So they backed off, and that's how we wound up with UA. United Artists. Yeah. Wow. Next week, when we come back. Well, let me tell you something, man. Uh, first time I met J uh, Jesse, there was instant distaste on both parts. You know, mm -hmm. I instinctively didn't like the guy. And he reacted instinctively to me. I despise Jesse Jackson, everything he stands for. And when we come back next week. Well, let, me, let me say this. Okay. I admire what he did early in his career. Okay. I want to discuss that with you. You know, he, he and people like Julian Bond and Andrew Young uh, laid their lives on the line. 
it wasn't until he, he came to Chicago to operate Operation Breadbasket and then turned around and formed o Operation Push that he became the hope that he is today. So he, he went through uh, a transformation. I give him full credit in his early career. But once he became who and what he is today, I give him no credit whatever. And next week when we come back, I want to discuss some of the black leadership in America, past and present. I want to discuss the making of the spook who sat by the door. And of course, what you encountered during the filming, after the filming, and even if we can get in depth and learn about some stories on the set of that. So thank you, Mr. Greeny. Thank you so much. This has been Swahili TV. We are here with the legendary author and poet of The Spook Who Sat By The Door and Baghdad Blues, Chicago's very own Sam Greenlee. Thank you, brother. I want a DVD copy of this.